Okay, we're on the we're on the camera. We're on the. Oh, I'm not in the picture though. I'm not in the picture, Henry. Henry, <laughs> get Henry in here. Love. I'm not. Henry. I'm not in the. I'm not in the shot. One step. Okay. I'll go. Well, I pull the mics up, okay? She's not. We're not. Mom's not being. I'm not in the live shot. Oh, that's right. He's gonna fix it in a minute. Or Susan's not in it. I Susan's thought it was me. It's Susan. Oh, it's Susan. There we go. It's our guest. There's keep going, guessing. keep going. That's perfect. There we go. I can't see where the damn. I didn't know it wasn't me or Susan. Okay, Mike's going up. Door shut. Hey, welcome to Boost Power Radio. Good morning. Hey, it's our holiday show today, and we are all excited to celebrate the holidays with you. As you plug in, for some uplifting ideas from really great women and today men. Oh, that's right. We have I a man. Know, woman and man. And just discover just from real people what's on their journeys, some ideas for you, your business, and your life, and just to have some fun. We right. have we're going to have some on. great fun. Well, uh, we're going to get started in our good work segment, and we have Susan Proof. And there she is from Sunshine Plumbing and Heating, Plumbing, Heating, and Air. I want to say that right. Susan is a national speaker, community leader, and just an all about great person. She does all kinds of wonderful things for our community. Oh my gosh. We're I can't so think lucky of a better holiday gift. It's Somebody a gift to you, you. Susan Proof. A gift yeah. to you, Susan Proof. Thank you. And then next up, we have a surprise special guest. This person has been part of productions in Denver, Colorado for over 30 years. He owns Baffling Productions. He's a big sponsor of Camp Experience. About to do the inaugural for our new governor, the amazing Doug Lane. That's right. Doug is great. I worked with Doug back uh, probably 30, 40 years ago back at Kim Radio. We used to hire you him. were just born. That's right. We used to hire him. You were a uh, He was just starting. Yeah. We used to hire him to do the sound like for different concerts and things that we did and, yeah. and events. And he, was and yeah. he went on to this. Become this mogul. He married sound well, rooms. is what I heard. Okay, I he heard he did marry well. well. He Actually, I heard well. that was the only mistake he made. Oh! oh. <laughs> well, I don't know about that because I know his wife very well, and I think she's great. I I know her wife so well. It's like it's all, I almost feel like she's here with me. <laughs> That's how well we know her. And then we have the amazing Julie Geller, who is on a video today. And Julie is a trained at Harvard, and she's a musician, uh, amazing. Performer, she's and she's just great. And she's a great video interview today. We have her on the show. I know she's got. She's really cool. She, uh, the music is kind of. I think it's a lot of it's Jewish praise music. Well, she yeah. does both. She does yeah. Jewish praise music, yeah. and then she just does like inspirational music. Plus, mm -hmm. she writes. She speaks. Yes. She has uh, creativity. Kind of. It's beautiful. So, so it's, it's a perfect, perfect time of year. I mean, Hanukkah we just missed it, but it's a perfect time of year to have Julius guest. That's it. That's right. And we're just going to put in some fun holiday things along the way, uh -huh. some celebrations, some funny things that we found, and it's just going to be a big show. You ready? I'm ready to go, and I think we're going to kick it right off now with Susan, our friend Susan Crew. Susan Crew. And the crowd goes wild. Oh! <laughs> As I mentioned before, Susan Crew uh, is with um, Sunshine Plumbing, Heating, and Air. I want to get it wrong. And they've done some work at my house, and what I'm going to share a little bit about her business, and we're going to talk about some other things for sure. So active in our community and has contributed so much to so many things. Um, but the uh, what I found is that they were so honest. I mean, it's so unusual if somebody come up and go, "No, nope, you don't need that. Nope, that's fine. No, nope, it's okay. Oh, that could need this." Great, they do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> them. Well, so they're supposed to sell you more. Yeah. Well, talk about um, your philosophy at Sunshine because when I stopped you to become a part of Cape Experience, what I was most impressed was with the style that you do your business and your devotion to your clients and. So talk about you as a woman-owned business owner in the plumbing industry. Uh, talk about that. Well, when we entered the market um, in 2012, my husband was up in Breckenridge, and when we married and merged our talents and started Sunshine Plumbing here in the metro area, 
we have 950 competitors. So wow. we had to be outstanding, outstanding, and just mind blowing customer service. And really, our number one, we have like one core value that we talk about all the time just do the right thing. Okay. If you need to give somebody their money back, you do it. If you need to go back five times to fix something and make it right, just do it. Whatever it is, just do the right thing. And that really has never failed us. It's cost us money sometimes, but in the long haul, you know, uh, it's the right thing to do, and, and that's how we operate our business all the time. And that's pretty evident. Like I said, when uh, your guy was over, I just had him do a check because we had something hooked up wrong, not by you, and it, it caused us a problem. And so I was like, nobody's touching putting the refrigerator line ever again, but a real plumber. Because that, that, let me tell you something, that don't work out. You are in big, deep doo doo. Yeah. You know? And so, um, when he came over, he said, well, you have a minimum. Why don't I check every, and I thought, oh, here we go. And you know, that guy was wonderful. He said, no, they did this right. They did that right. Said, oh, this, you might want to think about. You're okay for now. Oh, and this you should replace. And it was just so honest. And it was, it was really, uh, a great. And I felt like they were, they didn't come in looking like a bum either. <laughs> no, that is something that I'm really serious about is you know, our appearance of our technicians. We'd like to email you their picture and their bio before they come so you know who they are yeah. and who's coming into your home. Well, I know. They are right in there. Mm-hmm. And so, they're clean. They're clean. Oh, yeah. I want to point out, remember, they worked in our home. Everything was clean, sitting fan, no problems. And I, we have to call out William through for the yes. boiler job. He's like the boiler did. king. He's a boiler uh, genius. Amazing boiler genius. It was so pretty. We actually took selfies with him. <laughs> no, I, mean, I saw their, I sat in their garage and looked at this boiler and all the pipes and yeah. was like, I've never seen anything like it. Like, That's a work of art. In the Smithsonian. <laughs> That's kind of the specialty of ours and it's a dying art. Um, a lot of, a lot of technicians don't even know anything about boilers. Uh, but, and there's tons of places in the metro area, area in central Denver, you know, you know, up, all up in the mountains, everything. A lot of big boilers. homes have them. Really Anybody big homes, with a yeah. radiator, yeah. uh, will have it. Okay. Well, that's cool. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the other things that you do because, um, or maybe let's stay right on this for a minute. It's getting cold out. It's getting to be winter. And yeah. things happen. You, you wouldn't think so, but let me tell you something. Things happen in the winter, like pipe break and, <laughs> and it ain't fun. They, so. they do. And one of the things that you can do, especially if you have pipes that are against an outside wall that doesn't have a lot of insulation, and it is really cold, turn your heat up a little bit higher and open the doors underneath any cabinet that has pipes under there. That can really help you out. There's also a new product that's really inexpensive. If you can get it on Amazon, it's called a water bud. And you can put them underneath any sink that would have uh, pipes, and it will send an alarm if you're starting to get a leak or a flood. Oh, wow. And a lot of people use that if they're second homeowners and they're going to be away from the home or they're going yeah. on vacation, you want oh, to put water cool. pipes in there. That's what and I about the that. whole drip thing. So I know when it gets really cold, we drip one of the faucets. That's is your that nose. just an old... <laughs> not only does our nose, your nose drip. You know, uh, but is that true or is that I like a wise tale? I asked our technicians about it and they said it really doesn't matter. I mean, it's about the warmth of the pipes. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. If that's a way to tell that it's frozen. Like yeah. if, if it's not dripping anymore, then that's a good sign happening. that you have a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'll tell you a funny story real quick. The one year, um, our our home that we used and sold um, had really nice copper pipes that went along, and they were close to the outside wall, and they didn't insulate correctly. So in the winter, that pipe broke, but it was a sprinkler system pipe, so we didn't know. Yeah. And so that's when we finally turned on the sprinkler system, and, and we were having a barbecue with friends in the backyard, um, it, the pipe broke, but of course we didn't know it. And my kids come out in their bathing suits. And they go, what I go, what are you guys doing? They're like about five. And they go, we're going swimming in the basement. I said, uh, what? Uh, I run uh, down, and the kids are all in swimsuits, and they're jumping off the ledge into the basement, up the, oh <laughs> into the water. Gosh. And I'm looking at this with their outlets, and the water is so deep, it's like this far from the bottom. Mm-hmm. I go, get da, out da, of water. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I know. Five children electrocuted in this God. basement. That would be bad. Yeah, that was a that was a disaster party. Let me tell you something. <laughs> well, that actually happens, especially in Colorado, because people um, don't realize that it's really the inside pipes, and it's not something that might present itself now. I mean, it freezes. It, when you really have the problems, when it thaws yeah. out. Yeah. So oh. when it's below zero, that's not when you have the right. problem. It's when it gets to over 35, 30-ish, and then it starts melting, then you have water. Yeah, and it was they couldn't fix it, and we put... Um, like, I don't know, like insulation, but you cut yeah. like a, from those pool noodles or whatever. Yeah, and you know, you can actually do that yourself. If you have pipes underneath your sink that are on an outside wall and it's an older home or whatever, you can get that. Yeah. You can even use a pool noodle or go to Home Depot and wrap them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's especially true if you travel a lot and leave your home, you know, mm-hmm. unattended. 
Good. Well, um, if the problem does happen, do call someone. Yeah, they'll okay. fix you, and and, and you they know, will come out and take care of it. And they will not overcharge you. They will charge you for the time they spent, and it will be time well used and not made up hours of things that you wouldn't really need. No. Well, one thing I want to talk about is Susan's amazing national speaker yes. career. Because I have been a speaker forever, sister, and you have had one of the greatest fastest takeoffs in such a positive way. And I want to send that as a compliment because you have such a good message. So tell everyone what you're in the world talking about. Well, my main keynote is called How to Rockstar Your Business. And that's all of the ways, you know, I give everyone all of the tips, the tools, the down and dirty on how we grow our company so fast. Um, how we treat our customers. Well, we grew 535% in our first two years. Wow. So we went from one employee to 14 employees wow. within three years. And uh, we've been named uh, Denver Business Journal mm-hmm. Fastest Growing Company, I think, six mm-hmm. years in a row now. Um, small Amazing. business of a year. Yes. And that is really because of how we took care of our customers, um, how we marketed ourselves, yes. our PR, and then we win a lot of awards so people mm-hmm. notice us. And then that's how we grew. And that's what I speak about. Um, and so that's that we talk about how do you grow your company? How do you market yourself? How do you get a really positive review from the world? And you have to do great work, yeah. no matter what you're doing. You know, so if you're selling shoes or you're selling plumbing, right. you have to deliver great work and great customer service, or else you're not. Going to you know, I believe that customer service is the is the key to any business because people, when they like you, they, they share that. And today yeah. they share electronically, but they also share it first. Yeah. And there's no greater thing than a good solid plan. Customer service. Absolutely. When I was at Radio Disney, we grew a different station about 600 percent in the first couple of years, and that was a pretty big jump. And the first thing I did, I think they had like eight customers, active customers. I can imagine. Maybe. And the first thing I did was I went on a kind of big event on the station because I started there about six months in, and um, I called every single one of them because I saw what was sold to them, and they were not sold to anybody for it. In other words, you have to buy a certain number of stock or this thing. Right. And I called everyone up and said, I can't give you a money back, but I can give you a schedule that will work with you. And so I redid it and just at, let all the other advertising be in the air. And I re- regained a lot of that business. That's you have to do that. Do that. Mm-hmm. You do. Mm-hmm. We, you know, my, we did these things called toilet tune-ups for a whole year. William went seven days a week doing these toilet tune-ups for Andrew's List. And we made $12 mm-hmm. on them. And it was a way to say thank you to customers, get people interested in us, and those some of those customers are still with us. They were like from the very first day. And the people, I don't think people forget because they're so nope. afraid of the people that cheat you that when you find someone you trust, you don't want to give them up. And you tell everyone. I think that's why you have so many reviews. I mean, you go on, you have so many thousands of reviews. Um, also, to tell them about your TED talk because yeah, you want like, to talk. I want to hear Susan, and I know yeah. you were one of the most successful TED talk. Well, I did the TED Talk uh, last year, and it was it was awesome. And what I was talking about is we have a huge shortage of trade workers in our in our United States. In the next three to five years, we'll have a million people short. And what that for means trade is, workers, for trade like workers, carpenters, and plumbers, carpenters, and plumbers, and electricians, HVAC technicians, you know, HVAC. And why were there no women? I wanted to know going into these trades. They pay good. They pay phenomenal, mm-hmm. and you can usually get through school with zero debt. So you'll get out and have a job yeah, starting sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars right out of the Oh my day. god. Okay, so if anybody listening has kids, forget this two hundred thousand dollar year college education, exactly. toss it aside, go to plumber school and make sixty, seventy grand a year. Exactly. The electrician that Kathy Hawk's son is yeah. just a union electrician now. Yeah. And his family is set. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. And that's what I was talking about, the shortage and what how it's going to impact the general public is you're gonna to have to wait longer for services and you're going to have to pay more. Yeah. Because we have to pay more to get free workers like we have almost all master plumbers and their rates are super high but they're phenomenal they're great we don't send have to send them back 10 times to fix something they get it done the right time they're quick they're efficient so if you want to have really high quality people you're going to have to pay and no one wants to wait but with the shortage and sometimes it's hard to wait because it's like i know things that are outer like it impacts your life I, I could probably fill four more trucks tomorrow with our volume I just don't have the workers. And so I will run out If you're looking for a great job and yeah. you are a plumber and you're on your way to be a master plumber or you are a master plumber, call Susan. Or a great Tracy. Yeah, yeah. I have a person that's excited about a good team and good yeah. training. Absolutely. And you take apprentices on your team? We do take apprentices, but right now we are looking for a uh, either a master journeyman or master plumber mm-hmm. or an HVAC technician with a lot of experience. 
And we do have a sign-on bonus, so people can reach out to me on our website. Oh, hell, I'm going to get my plunger and come on okay, over. There you go. Come on. <laughs> well, okay, here we go. I have the nice personality part. I don't have the technical skill, but right. hey, for a sign-on bonus, <laughs> there you go. Right. You know, if you were interested in that. Well, it's our us. <laughs> well, what are you excited about now? So the thing that many of you don't know about Susan, is she serves on many, many boards around town. She's a leader, especially in the Metro North Chamber. She's in charge of the wonderful women's function. So many things. So looking into 2019, what are you, Susan, excited about? Well, I already have a fair amount of speaking engagement books, so I'm excited about that. Metro North Chamber Women's and Leadership Group will be having a big event in September, September 18th, so we can't wait for that. There's going to be phenomenal keynotes, great food. Um, there's just a lot of really positive things. And for Sunshine, you know, we lost some employees this year that were really key to us. I've been with us for a really long time. And once we sort of got over that and through it, it was such a positive experience. So sometimes you're afraid to make a change because you don't know what's going to happen. But for us, this has been the most positive year in our history. And our team is the best team we've ever had. We have got the A team hands down. And, uh, we are looking forward to 2019 because we are going to kick it. Now, you were talking earlier uh, before the show started, and I thought it was a great thing about um, venting. And I know we all vent. I have friends I vent to, and I vent yeah. way too much. And, uh, and, uh, and so I think it's funny in HVAC to call venting. I know. Ah, it's not it it like it. I mean, it's important, it's really really important to be able to say, oh, God, so why do we call well, complaining venting? Well, <laughs> you know, I'm not 100% sure of that, but this is what I found out. We had uh, employees that would vent right. to each other for long periods of time. And continuous, and we would have some office staff that yeah, would that to work them. a lot with people yeah. just get bitchy and, and let them and, and let them go and go and go and go. So I really started researching it, and I, what I found out is that that is really unhealthy. Like you have to be able to unload your problems, but somebody needs to stop you and say, okay, well, what was great that happened today? What's great about your job? Yeah, and sometimes you put you in a funk. You can flip right. you, you, and it will and then all of a you, sudden you're you're like, yeah, you're, you're so wrong. Wrong. You're swirling the drain, yeah. and you yeah. keep yeah. it going, okay. right? So we're gonna do all plumbing uh -huh. Uh -huh. because you're going happens. down the swirling <laughs> drain. <laughs> yeah, and right. so in the toilet, your your attitude to the toilet. That's right. Well, right. this is what we do now. So if you have to vent, so you can do it for a little while, but then you need to say what you're grateful for and something great that happened. Day. And maybe it's something really small, like there wasn't a line at Starbucks. You know, yeah. like maybe sometimes you have to reach, space, or sometimes have just, to, to just to get out of the funk, you know, just to right. switch switch uh, your thoughts, just to try to switch them. That's what happens to me. I'll go down a rabbit hole. Exactly. You know, you know, you know, and then you attract uh, what you concentrate yeah, and then you have to take what you have to, you, you know, it's so easy a friend or so, so knock it off. And take your you know, yeah, and you know, our business is like, hard. Pull myself out of it, but it's hard. Or yeah. go get an edible. Oh, yeah, well, we do that too, but I'm oh, glad you work for us. But in our business, it's hard because no one ever calls us when they're having a good day, right? right. There's either like, there's oh, poop wow. on the floor, or they're freezing, or they're sweating, or something bad is happening. So, <laughs> That's true. Like, at least it, they don't call us when they're poop on the floor. Right? Yeah, right. so Thank there's God. something bad going on. And then our poor technicians have to get stuck in traffic every day. You know, on a call that should take them 15 minutes from point to point, it takes yeah. an hour and a half yeah. because they're stuck in traffic. Yeah, so, it, you know, it's hard not to get grumpy. So we just really are trying to encourage everybody to be, you know, look at their things they're grateful for and really find something great that's happened in their day. Well, I'm grateful cool. for something else that you do that I want you to talk about, and that is Thrift Denisa. Thrift Denisa. So I'm calling you out today, and you're well, thrifted. 100% thrifted. Are you 100% thrifted today? I am. Thrifted? Yes, oh, yes, I am. Thrifted. Awesome. Thrifted Denisa. And so what Thrift Denisa is is Susan's creation, so tell me more about it. Well, Thrift Denisa was... Um, I, it came about because I was trying to raise money for a nonprofit, and I wanted to take people thrifting on this bus. And some great friends from First Transit had a bus that they could use for community events. And we were going to have people pay to get on the bus. I sponsored lunch and breakfast and a location in the big AMF Sunshine. And I taught everyone how to thrift store shop. And then all the money went to the nonprofit. Awesome. So we raised the money first for the Rotary Club of Commerce City. And then we've done it several other times for Stout Street Foundation. I'm going to beg you for Camp Wapiapi one of these days. We'll do it. Let's it's do it. Right. Yeah. And we'll be doing one this year with um, Colorado Women's Chamber and a big fancy bus. We have a big fancy homemade bus. And then we'll be doing some things with, with Camp Experience and Goodwill. Yeah. But, you know, I learned in the recession. I, I think I became a recessionista because I couldn't shop at the stores I used to shop at. So I found out that you could get awesome stuff for like this. five bucks. 
got it at the ARC. That's gorgeous. Yeah, I got it at the ARC for $7. Are um, you serious? Yeah. That's going to be like a $200 coat. It probably is. And some things like that we call unicorns. Uh, so I and find awesome. the best treasures. It's it's a treasure hunt, so it's really fun. But I have been deemed a master. You're a master mm-hmm. treasure yeah. MT, and I actually have a t-shirt. And so when we go, I'm with Lisa. Many of the master thrifter friends, you see them. We walk around and help people. Yes. Just discover, like, look, here's a wonderful piece. Who is this size? Who is this color family? Yeah. And it is a blast. Um, I must say, as the case of good will last with Lisa, I got a wonderful coach bag. We found that jacket. Perfect I shape. What it was. Oh, yeah, we found that incredible rip jacket. Rip-off or something. Yeah, so, for to me. It's a designer yeah, called rip-off yeah. or rip-off or something. <laughs> It yeah. wasn't a rip off at half of five ninety nine. I'm saying yeah, it was a good deal. It was two dollars and eighty cents. It was like what was the Joseph Rip Rip, rip, rip Copper oh. Fancy high end. Yeah, it's like a four hundred dollar good jacket. I found an alpaca coat last year at the oh, Fort no. Goodwill for twelve ninety nine. No, 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 no. It was brand. It was oh. like brand new, and I had to Google it. So whenever I'm thrifting, I always keep my phone with me and Google. Mm-hmm. And I wear a belt bag, formerly known as a uh, fanny, fanny pack. pack. No, so no, 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 no. You know, keep the, my stuff. The accessory, there. formerly known as a fanny pack. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. yes. So you can Google and look up stuff. So That's you can right. see what you got. Broken stock boots for ninety nine last time. But there we don't There you go. You can find it. Well, since we are such a good thrift community, um, so we always do this fun thing. We okay. Like to take one of the girls. Wait, 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 one more thing. What, what, if you what? want to be a thrift community, you want oh, to yeah. go on the bus and you want to go on the next. There's a couple yeah. of trips coming up. I think one maybe in February, then one in March. Um, you, how can people find out about it? I know you can always look at our website, you know, yes. either Camp Experience or Houston. They have it up there. But let's go to that. Uh, on my, you can follow my Facebook page, uh, Thrift Anissa on Facebook. Just find it, Thrift Anissa. It's a purple logo. You'll see it. And then I'll be talking about everything that's coming up right. and give you some tips on thrifting and some ideas that you can Great ideas. So thrifting stuff, Facebook page, find out, you'll learn about the trips, we're gonna take the bus, we're gonna have fun, we're gonna raise shop. money, do good and have fun. shop and not spend a lot of money. That's yeah. I mean, how do you get any better than that? And celebrate the unicorns, which is always yeah. so much fun. Especially okay, now can she be the Yes, card? now she can be yes, the card. Yes, ma'am. It's time to do yeah, the card. I'm you in straight line. I want to be sure I want to just that link gets to do the cards too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he gets to do the girlfriend card. Whom did you date that was not your usual type or most unlike you? Probably your husband. No, no. You know, like, well, like, sure, I don't know. Um, I don't, I do not know how to answer this. Um, you can do, do a do over. Yeah, I'm going to do a do over. Yeah. You're a skier. Too, Sorry, honey. I know you're I a skier. I was a skier, yeah. ski racer for a long time. I know. If you had to be a guest or a character on a TV show, which one would you choose? Okay, well, I love anything English history. So um, I would love to be on the Tudors and uh, maybe be Anne Boleyn. Oh, yeah, that'd, be, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, we we know know how know. Have, yeah, 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 We'll hopefully be live at maybe some of the Thrift Release events. Yes, I think we'll we should. Bring Who's Power Live? We make videos. Yeah. And come out and, uh, and we just really appreciate you and all that you do with our community. We're well, going out to the East and we'll be coming up soon in February, I guess. And Merry Christmas. Mm-hmm. And Merry Christmas to you as a family. Thank you. Super. We'll see how much fun it is to have a gift of Susan Drew, mm-hmm. our wonderful guest. I know. And, uh, we're talking a little bit about Christmas. So I had pulled up some things, um, before our next guest. You could chat. Yeah. I want to, I, so I want to hear some of the fun things well, that I know you've been working on. Them. A few things, you know, I thought, well, maybe we should look at some like friendly games, which everybody gets together at Christmas. And yeah. After you fight over politics and, you know, stuff like that. Then yeah. You can, then what, right? <laughs> yeah. And then you get mad at the one who's drunk and some sister gets mad at another sister and goes stomp at home. Yeah. After all that and stuff. And mom happens. likes you best. Yeah. yeah. All that. Yeah. Okay, so all so. that. Then we can maybe play some games. And so here are some games. These are kind of fun. Candy cane, of course. Anything uh, like that. No, I don't know that. Oh, because the yeah, game, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you could probably add shots to it for adults. That's what you know, say. Or something to make it fun. But if you've got kids, that could be fun. Um, also, there's Santa Limbo. That's where you take a pillow and a belt and you put it around you and then you do the limbo. Oh, but you were doing it at Santa oh, with the big tummy. Making lots of noise, but mm-hmm. your, it's fine. Don't take it. But the uh, but what I was going to say is that. Um, you can do Santa Limbo. I think that, I'm going to play that. We're having a, a holiday party, and I think I'm going to 
bring a pillow. See if people yeah. can do that, that would yeah. be funny. I know, I think it would be hysterical. Oh, of course, most of us don't need a pillow anymore. <laughs> I was going to say, what if you already went to like Santa ish? Yeah, you go, okay, you got the Santa. I mean, the fact that I would think about going under a limbo stick was pretty amazing. In our yeah, life. I was going to say, no limbo for me. I'm yeah, no limbo's out. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I thought they said Christmas colonoscopy, but it didn't. It says <laughs> Christmas Carol well, Dictionary. Dictionary. Yeah, I had oh, my, that would be good. See, here's why I read that because my glasses were a little off. Yeah. You know, and I was like, and oh, you would love Christmas colonoscopy. colonoscopy. Generally, that just sounds so. really fun. Then yeah. we can add the little eggnog to that mix. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be really right, there we go. Don't give yourself Merry a Christmas <laughs> of a going, the gift of going at yeah. <laughs> the colonoscopy. That's right. Ooh. Uh, anyway, you can tell we're at that age. Christmas, I know, really. And if you haven't got one, you should get one, by the way. And if you make it your New Year's resolution, if you're due to have one, yes. get one. It's a very simple thing to do and can save your very life. Healthy. So All right. Do that. So then the next thing is Christmas charades, of course. Uh, the Christmas memory game. That's probably fun because you got all these old people there. Like yeah. Aunt that's like 80. And yeah, that would make people cry. <laughs> we'll be sitting there all day. Uh, we only made it who one, won? one round. <laughs> yeah, who won? I don't remember. Aunt doesn't. <laughs> she didn't win. They wouldn't even know who, what part. You could ask the same question over and over again in our family. Nobody would know. We're all so damn old. Um, and then there's family feud. What yeah, which maybe just happens <laughs> naturally. <laughs> you think? It's, um, I think, yeah, that would be, uh, yeah. And then that you could put one idea. Weird stuff in stockings, and you could guess what that is. Yeah, so we do. So we do the uh, white elephant gift. Yeah, all right. right. So we all bring something for ten dollars, and we'll be doing this Monday night in Indiana, and Doug uh, will be there, and that's kind of a segue maybe to our guest. Yes, and let's bring in Doug Lane. Who is our guest? So this guest I know a lot about. Um, you're going to introduce him. Okay. Yeah, do you know more about him than me? No. <laughs> I was going to say. I've known him longer than you. I think. Yeah. I, I okay. Think so. so you have known him no, no, longer, no, no, but you know more about. Him. Okay. Well, let's see. We'll both do our introduction. So my introduction to Doug Lane is he is the most talented producer that I've ever met. He is not only handsome. I agree. But uh, he's a fab, fantastic dad. Uh, to Sarah Lane, he is um, a wonderful life partner and a great chef recently. With the Hello Fresh boxes, he is the cookie. Oh, oh so um, if, if there's well, a miracle on 34th Street, it's Doug Lane <laughs> cooking. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, so, right. so welcome, Doug Lane. Now you do your Doug Lane. I was going to say that pretty much ditto on everything you said. Doug is amazing. I mentioned earlier I met him many many years ago uh, when we had a very small business and he was uh, setting up sound and doing things for us at Kim Radio, um, and he went on to become this mega producer guy that he's actually producing the governor's. And, no, he's and he's done this before for us. Yeah. Um, and he goes all over the country and the world. Mm -hmm. And he's a wonderful nice man. He happens to also be the husband of my good friend Betsy. So um, and I can't say enough nice things about that. Well, if, if you use his business, you will never, and I mean this, never be disappointed. There you and go. Doug Lane from Cash And the crowd goes wild. Hey, Yay! Doug Lane. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gotta wash your hands there. This thing is um, welcome. Okay, welcome to Boost Power mm -hmm. Radio, Doug. So, um, Ron, I think you should do the Doug interview because okay. you know, I tell you, I know too much. You know too. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, and you so don't want to tell. Things like how to dog, and you know, <laughs> help me do the trash. You know, I've been yeah. asking things about that. So, um, but Doug, tell us just while we're thinking about the deep dark questions of that. Tell everyone a little bit about um, factory production mm -hmm. and your yeah. life in Denver and DJ Doug and how. The uh, botanist for bar mitzvah, King DJ Doug. I know, that was uh, it, right? Now is doing the governor's inaugural. Yeah, well, uh, Dougie DJ Fresh. Yeah. DJ. <laughs> so um, I started my business right out of college and uh, started mixing um, as a DJ. Actually, started the business and then became a DJ. So I had DJs working with me. And the uh, mobile DJ business was great. We did uh, 10 plus years of it. We grew it nice and big. And Everybody had a great time, and that segue was right to production and doing live production and business and corporate. And then we just took it in and did more politics. And here we are, almost 38 years later. Yeah, and you have a big facility. I have a facility down um, in downtown, and um, we've been there for 23 years. Well, let me tell you something. There is nothing that you can think of. If you want done visually <laughs> or audio, audio visual, but this person that your company can't do, I, I never see so you have those different screens, you have yeah. all the, and now you're getting some new stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. Out. There's some uh, new things coming at Fastlane. We are uh, we made a big investment into portable mobile 
video screens and on trailers for outdoor events. And so if you want to have like a picnic in the park to show a movie, you want to show a day. If you want to show a movie, not at night, but you want to start it during the day. It's like a big, big TV, a monster TV. How big are they now? They are approximately 9 by 16 feet. Oh my God. Yeah, they're on trailers. They set up in about 15 minutes. And oh. they have daylight screens, very similar to if you went to the Rockies game and you, you saw watched, that you watched yeah. the screen. Uh, what a great thing to have in a class reunion, yeah. if you're having a party, a wedding, anything yeah. outside. Now you can yeah. have videos that people can see. And, and I met you uh, right. after doing, uh, you remember, after doing inflatable movies. Right, I remember that. We did inflatable movie screens did for years. Did we do one for Kim? I think uh, we, we did. Yeah, downtown, and, right? Yeah, yeah. we did. And then we um, did the opening in Stapleton for right. a long time. And so what we did is we um, kind of, this is kind of the new of that. That was, for, of course, at night. Mm -hmm. And now you can have your screen during the day or not. Oh, but, but more importantly, it's social media, it's doing live concerts, it's doing everything. I remember, because I, I know what it was, but it was downtown. And there was an event screen. I think I might have been at another time. And the water world or something. Yeah. Did you do dive in movies there? I did. Yeah, that's what yeah. I yeah. used to do. <laughs> That was so. That was my promotion when I went to the initiative like a hundred years ago. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, was like it was cool great. Diving, yeah, we I mean, had uh, pool it, and it, it was a big deal, you know. And it actually it's still very popular. But with this new kind of this product, you can do it anytime. You can do it anytime. So you yeah. can finish your dinner and you can go right into the movie and then into the night and then the kids get better because before in Colorado in the summer you couldn't start a movie till eight thirty. Oh no, you could eight thirty nine even. Yeah, you know? and yeah. so it was just really hard. So I mean, that's just one segment of it. But the fact that it can do social media, it can do all kinds of cool things at events. It's pretty good. Golf amazing. tournaments, you know, think about leaderboards. leaderboards. Oh, yeah. They're dynamic. Oh, yeah. You can show actual it also can do, You can program anything you want on the screen. Yeah, it can do PowerPoint video. It can do live. It has, satellite, wow. it has a dish network satellite on it. But more importantly, also, um, a big part of this is we're going to uh, talk about doing emergency preparedness. Mm -hmm. And if there is an emergency, then it's a real video. Mm -hmm. uh, versus, you know, a box of knots that just flashes mm -hmm. off. Now, cool. you're doing the governor's uh, inaugural yeah. celebration. So tell us a little bit about that. When it's going to be, mm -hmm. uh, so if you can, some things that happen. Yeah, fun. sure. And it's uh, January 8th, yeah. um, of course, as yeah. always. It's down at the uh, state capitol on the right. steps. Um, we're going to be setting it up uh, a few days before. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. It's a big deal. It's a big deal, and it's going to get a lot of national news. Yes, yes, it will. Yes, it will. We're planning for that. Um, the bleachers with guests, uh, there's going to be a public viewing area. This, this year. Just look me a ticket. Um, you can or I can, I'll come work. Yeah, oh, come, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can and, and We're, we're praying, praying for warm weather. That's a lot of times it's been chilly. Yeah. 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 This will be my sixth or seventh time. So I just think this is going to be amazing. Yeah. It's going to be uh, yeah. it's such a new era for Colorado yeah. and uh, the country that mm -hmm. we receive it. Yeah. Um, and for those of you out of state and, and don't know that we've elected our first like, governor in the, in the country mm -hmm. in the first right. hundred. And uh, so it's going to be an interesting celebration, not only of changing the governor, but of the celebration of that you're a, a diverse and accepting population. Yeah, it's, it's very yeah. exciting. And um, I'm, I'm really, both my staff and, and I are very proud of that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's and I know you've done, I mean, you're not voted, but you've done these with both sides of the fence. Oh, I've yeah. worked for so, uh, uh, most of all the past presidents. Uh, we, we do a lot of work for the White House. We do a lot of work for our senators, congressmen, we do local. Um, we've been there through all our mayors, you know, start, all of them. Um, and we still work for all the mayors. We do the state of the city. We do all the projects. So it's, it's a, the politics of what we do is really important because it needs to be right. But more importantly, we're doing corporate events, we're doing private events, we're doing a lot of nonprofit in town. It's a big part of our business. And people know when they go to a fast lane event, it, it's nonprofit, they know how exceptional it is. It's going to be good. Because there's nothing that ruins an event more than a bad sound system or oh. bad video. I mean, you can spend all this money and mm -hmm. have an event that you literally rented the hall for 20 grand. You yeah. spend $100 a person, you're going to raise $300,000. And if your sound system goes down, you're done. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, uh, the, the, the technology has changed so much. We're in a digital world, but we're, we're also providing a lot of uh, digital equipment, and that equipment is very tuned to each room and each event. And people that are still in the analog days are really not providing much. So no, they're not. They're not providing anything. I mean, look at us here. We're, we're, we're going to well, and Doug is doing one of the first events at the Gay World Hotel. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah so one of the long term clients. Tell yes. a little bit about that, Doug. So Aurora Economic Development Council was uh, very involved in, in 
bring the gateway to Colorado. And so we are doing one of the first major non-profit events, which is the Aurora EDC event, and that's in January, and the next day on the 17th. And it's very exciting because it, it really is going to kick off the event center that they have there. And um, it's I think it's almost all sold out. It's getting close. And we're very excited because they're a wonderful people. Yeah, but I just have, I'm just curious. How did you make that leap? What was it that made you wake up one day and say, okay, I can go bigger? I can um, do bigger. I can do bigger. I think she married well. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. he had the wind beneath his wings. Yes. Yeah. I think he That's did. She is. I'm thinking when your clothes are clean and your house is clean, you have two cute dogs, a nice kid, and a lovely wife, that everything else works. And if you say, and my guess is, I guess if you have been around Betsy too much, she put you to work so you can Harder than um, you have to work on. He yeah, is my technical. <laughs> I am. I am her technical guru. I, I will say. Um, I will say that she has uh, provided uh, a great opportunity for growth, and we, we are a great couple when it comes to putting events together. But when we do work together, it's a lot of fun. Like camp experience, we have supported that for 15 years, mm-hmm. and uh, we, we we will continue. Um, but to answer your question. Um, I think our clients propelled us into where we are today. We took us along with them. We traveled with them. Uh, we spent time with them. Our clients are not just clients. They're our friends and they're our associates. And we make a team and a partnership. And we like to think that we're not vendors, we're partners. And it really That's has, it. And it really that has, shows when people have that attitude. Oh, it, 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 it is the only thing that has really provided us the fun to move forward. Well, I think your business is one of the quiet, one of the biggest, quietest success stories in Denver. Because Thank I you. know where you started from. I mean, because mm-hmm. I knew you then. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm enough older. You were probably just out of school when I, I was. was I was 19 when I started. Yeah. This whole thing. And uh, and it's just it's been an incredible thing to watch. Mm-hmm. And um, I just know that you know most people when you're doing it, you need to take something. First of all, it was good enough. I mean, many people would have stopped when they were doing the sure. the mobile DJ business that was probably the biggest in the city. Yeah. And to just have that vision and that. Inspiration and then the know how to take that vision and make it happen. Well, yeah, there, there's a lot of people behind the company, and there, there always has been for, for all the years it's been a business. And the employees really have helped it grow. I mean, I'd I like to think that I try to be a good mentor and leader, but they really help and, and make it happen. And it's it really is a, a great collaboration. Right? Great, thank Yeah, we're going to have you. Um, we would do, uh, yes. He has so, pick a girlfriend so card. You have to pick a girlfriend card. <laughs> like a new girlfriend? Or? No, you don't get to pick a new girlfriend. You get I to like pick you. a card. <laughs> so I will be your You're girlfriend. girlfriend. And you will pick one of these cards and then you will kind of boop the deck. It's the card that wants you. That's the same card I want. And then you just have to do it. That would have been a good one. It's going to be dumb. Okay. I'm going to read it. Don't peek. Don't peek. It says, Who is your best friend for how long? What are the secrets of enduring of an enduring friendship? Oh, that's a good one. Well, I mean, there's no question that you're my best friend. Oh, is it? Uh, absolutely. I'm gonna cry. Um, you're, you're my best friend, and it's uh, been twenty. I've known you for twenty three years. Oh, okay. Yeah, twenty three years, and um, we make it fun. I think that's you and I really make it fun. We we try to. I have this thing called the Sea of Love, and I learned it from a from my photography teacher who was in the news business. And the sea of life was spontaneity, emotion, and action. The sea of life. Great. I love that. Yeah, isn't that great? And I try and apply that in everything we do and everything Fastly does and also everything that Betsy does. And it really has great benefits. And you know, you can tell when you're around you guys, you're a, you're a quiet, but oh, I would call you a power couple, but you do it quietly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, don't I would. know about that, but thank you, Brenda. But I, I want to shout out to Doug because he does That's so much for his community. And uh, when you hire Fastlane, you get Doug Lane, which I think is really unique these mm-hmm. days. But the CBO is so. Well, I hired Fastlane, my friend Betsy got Doug Lane. There you go. <laughs> I got Doug Lane. Oh, wait, let me be clear. <laughs> I've got Doug Lane. This is mine. Yeah. But uh, if you hire Fastlane, you really do get the CBO's yeah. heart and soul. And uh, a wonderfully trained team. So it's uh, thank you so much for being Thanks on. Thanks for coming in. Our radio Happy holidays. Supporting Absolutely. our dream. Absolutely. And, uh, we, I'm, I'm we, proud of both of you. Thank you. Oh, Absolutely. Sweet. I remember Betsy said 10 years ago, she said, I want to have a radio show. I want to be on the radio. And guess what? Here we are. And, and I said, are. only if I could do with mom. <laughs> you know, and here we are. Goal setting and dream setting. That's the, that's the big Betsy thing. 
It, it really is, and she's great at inspiring people to do that and, and helping check on you, make sure you've done it and keep on track. So, yeah. well, thanks for having me. And thank you. It's good seeing you, Doug, and yeah. happy holidays, like you said. Okay. Well, you know, um, so in our transition here, because we're getting ready for the amazing Julie Geller, right. we're going to have that video up in five right. minutes. Um, I, we cut out my segment because I was going to do the planning segment. We're going to do that right now. Right? But I'm only going to do the basic. Brief and I think segment. you should do it right now. That's um, really cool. Because, well, we're just only going to do a little part because I'm going to save the vision boards for later. Okay. So, I'm going to do a little part in about five but minutes. This is the, the soapbox I'm on. We have too much electronics and we're losing our heart and our soul. I believe that. Right? So, everybody's like on their phone, but where do you put like your big dream to have a radio show? You put it on your phone, put like to do on your wonder list, have a radio show. You really have to, I believe, connect your heart and soul. So I'm a proponent of using uh, some kind of a device, a journal or a planner. This happens to be a beautiful planner by a local artist. That's right. And I actually have one of these. They're, it's incredible. And the local artist is, oh, Betsy! It's me! Oh, yeah, that was one of the things I wrote down to do. But anyway. this art, though. That was this is, this is the, a while, so Henry can do it. This is the planner. But this is, happens to be the 2019 planner. After the first quarter, we'll have a planner with no dates available. So you, don't, you can't say, like, I can't do a planner if I miss the date. You can start anytime. But, um, it's so much fun. Yeah, but so what I want to uh, talk about, we'll do a different segment on a different show. And this has all kinds of inspirational art. And this is a little photo. And, the photo yeah, photo. Uh, and this uh, is art you've done. Like, this is all my art. Okay. Yeah, it's all her art. And it's, uh, like practice kindness always. And then this angel happens to be fake, which is the one that I just got for the day. I just mm -hmm. gave me faith. And I was like, I love it. <laughs> Um, but what I like, Rhonda, let's look here. On the day, you can write what Susan was talking about, what you're thankful for. So what I would like all of our listeners to think about is using gratitude as a business strategy. And I'm talking about what's working, what Susan said, right, what's right. working, what do I want to change, and what's going to make something better. Yeah. And I think when you write stuff down, it just helps. It makes it real. You know, you can fill it up and put it down on paper. That's it. Um, and I personally prefer planners like this. You know, I do my phone. I like yeah, yeah, and um, I like this one too. Like, don't be busy, <laughs> be productive. Isn't that wouldn't that be helpful? Every page has got a little something. Something. Don't wish for it, work for it. Just saying. Just mm -hmm. saying. That's so we will do this segment in a different time. Okay. But um, in the to do the actually, there's actually a class coming up. We can play that. So how do we get our Julie Geller roll? Well, you've been there. Yeah, you have to tell Mr. Henry. Yeah, Mr. Henry, he'll roll it. What are you going to talk about these? Things? Well, this would be a part of the planner. Um, I also created some cards, like every day you're thinking, like, well, I'm just not focusing you with four card called Dream Big, Live Big. And this one says, what light will you share? So it's just a way to think about ways to talk about uh, I love this. what's going on. Yeah. Also, I think we're going to roll. We about ready. Just a little bit more. Okay, we're going to squeeze out of the way here. We're going to roll a video on Julie Geller. And as we mentioned, Julie went to Harvard, actually. In the conservatory music, they're not Welcome to Boost yes. Power Radio, Julie Geller. Thank you so much for having me. Um, we are just always seeking to really have girlfriend stories about successful people of all walks of life. And when I think of success in all walks of life, I think of you. Um, I think of you for many reasons. Not only your Harvard education, not only your music conservancy, not only the concerts you've done in Israel and all over the world, but I think that you have been daring about um, celebrating faith, you've been daring about formats with your choir work, uh, your band, your personal work, you've been daring with six albums. Uh, so tell everybody kind of how you ever got into music. <laughs> music found me. I did not find it. I grew up in a home where music was revered, uh, but I didn't think that I had any any talent until one day it just found me in the ninth grade, literally. It kind of said, here I am. You can you can write songs, and that's what I've dedicated my life to. Uh, okay, so music found you. So uh, explain to the people listening. You were walking down the street and music mm -hmm. you fell. How did music find you? All right, so I was at a play practice, play rehearsal in the, in the ninth grade, and my friend Jason found an old piano, and he was a pianist, and he started playing along, playing playing with it, and I just said. What is that? Just it wasn't a song that I recognized. And he said, "I'm just messing around with chords." So it, for for those who don't know what a chord is, a chord is three notes played together. And so I said, "Can you show me what a chord is?" And he showed me a chord, and I was like, "Wow!" But then what happens after you play that first chord? And then he said, "Well, you can play this next chord." And I said, "Well, then what happens?" He said, "You can play this chord." And he really showed me the structure of the song, and uh, I was I was hooked. 
So like, did you sit down and start writing your first song? I mean, how does that work from being hooked? Like, yeah. did you start to take classes? How did you, you know, tell us a little bit about your path. Yeah. So then I went home and I was really lucky because we had a beautiful piano in our home and my parents loved music and they were fine with me sitting there for hours and hours. Um, and, you know, did I, I'd call in and ask my mom, who was an amateur musician. So, and then I, I literally spent hours and hours and hours doing that. And what was your first song? Um, the first song I wrote um, was in my school. We had something in my high school. We had something called Color War, which was the whole school divided into two teams or three teams. And you have you're like heaven and earth, or truth and kindness, and your team has to sort of fight for your theme. Um, so every year we have a song for for the team. Um, and every year until that point, we took songs we knew and just sang over them. Remember the olden days? You'd have like the tape playing and yeah. you'd just sing louder than it yeah. before karaoke. Um, so two or three of my first songs were for Color War in my high school. And does that song have a, does, is that alive today? Did the Color War song ever go anywhere? Or? So the amazing thing about that song is everyone who is on my Color War team remembers it. Even today when people come up and start singing, singing those songs to me because we were all a part of it. We were a part of the song. We were a part of the team. We all wanted to win. I don't remember if we won, but we, we were all part of, of the songs. Awesome. Okay, so you started with the Color War songs and then it started yeah. growing. So then does that go next? Does education come in the Harvard and Music Conservatory? There was just a part of me. I had the DNA of songs in me. So I just sat by myself. And then after college, I spent a year in Israel. Um, and uh, I brought I brought a keyboard with me. And there I wrote, it's the first time I did write two songs that weren't color war songs, mm -hmm. which was a huge deal. Mm -hmm. A huge deal. It's like, oh, wow, I got, I got more songs coming, more songs coming. Um, and after that, I went to college. And it was, it, it was totally the wrong music department for me. I didn't have the confidence. I was at Harvard University and the, the people in the music department were either, seemed to me like they were either like piano, like uh, classical music prodigies or really into jazz and show tunes. And I totally didn't fit in. And I didn't have the confidence to find a mentor there. So I just steered clear. I did my own thing and I, I lost out on a lot of learning opportunities because I, I didn't have the confidence to study music, um, but I, I just kept doing my own thing. But I, so I kept putting up these signs, like songwriter looking for band, songwriter, I still have some of them, and it, it never worked out. It never worked out. There was just, people weren't invested in the project. I wasn't that good yet. <laughs> um, I couldn't really explain what I wanted. I, I didn't really have a vision, and I had these songs, and it was hard to get people on board. So um, my junior year, I bought a guitar, and I said, well, I know that guitar you can kind of show up with and do on your own. So I started playing guitar, um, and that year, I it just really quickly started writing more songs and started playing, like, in coffee houses and on campus and around. Um, and then after I graduated college, um, I worked for a year, and then I, I was in Boston, so I found an amazing program, program at the New England Conservatory of Music, which was just for people like me. It was for people who kind of like didn't fit into the norms, hadn't maybe studied music before. And there I really, it was amazing. I had amazing mentors and I was basically taking undergraduate classes because I'd never studied music before. Um, and, but I was working, studying Jewish music and songwriting and it was, that was a perfect fit for me. This is a long past. So here now let's fast forward. Six albums, band, writing for our choirs, um, performing not only in your house concerts, but performing all around town, yeah. uh, traveling, performing, winning uh, national video awards, which is one thing we have in common. Um, but tell us about when it was hard and yeah. what you learned. Yeah. Along the path. So I'm thinking back to my first band. So when I was in the conservatory, I assembled a seven piece band. And um, we, we did an album, and I learned a lot, and it was so stressful. So number one, look at the people who are in my band. So Chief Roche was on drums immediately after graduating. I don't even know if he graduated. He went on to play with Herbie Hancock. Since then, he's played with tons of Grammy winners. He travels the world. Um, he's a very, very, very high-level drummer. Um, another woman in my band was Heather Massey, who, um, who now sings with uh, the Waylon Jennies. Uh, somebody else in my band was James Carson, a very, very talented pianist. So uh, for me, I had a feeling like 
I wasn't as good as the people in my band. They're playing my music, and I'm not nearly as accomplished as a musician as they are. And I remember my mentor came to a concert of ours, um, my teacher, and the only comment that I remember that he said was, wow, you got to keep that band which actually felt like a stab in my heart, which was confirming what I felt, which was, I don't know if my music is so good, but the band makes it sound really, really good. It took me many years beyond that to realize that um, I actually do have something special. I do have something special, and maybe it's not um, instrumentally. Like, I'm certainly not at the level of any of those instrumentalists, but in terms of what I see that I offer, it's special and unique to me, and, and I value it, and... And others value it as well. And it took me so long to realize that. I'd be writing music, or I'd be working this other job and writing songs. It just never went away. So I think, I think it had took me so many years to appreciate that I do have something special to offer. But I, I didn't know that until at least my thirties. Tell us what's new and what you're excited about now. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I'm really excited about when, that's even when you ask about, you know, when did I, kind of get it together in, in some way. There were so many years when creating was hard for me that um, that I've the things I've discovered over the past six or so years where creating is like easy and joyful and in the flow, um, I thought, well, I, I have something to teach here because I've been on both sides of this fence. Um, so I developed a course for helping people be creative as you are with ease and joy and lightness and consistency. And what is the name of that course? It's called The Magic of You. The Magic of You. And how do people learn more about that? Tell them how to find out about you and all about that course. Yeah, all, all the information is on my website, juliegeller.com. Juliegeller.com. Okay, check that out. So now, um, the last thing we do is we may have you say kind of a global statement. So someone's in their car and they just want to sum up. What do you have to speak into these listeners and to women that are listening to this podcast? Mm -hmm. Just from your own journey and from your own experience perspective, what would you tell them? I would tell you that you have something special and unique to offer in this world. Even if, you, even if you feel like what you have isn't unique or isn't good enough or isn't amazing, um, it, it is. It actually is. And if there's you have an impulse to do something with your life, I would I would uh, urge you to, to try your best to follow that. Awesome. So now we do this really funny thing. So um, you pre-picked a random card, so pull your cards over, and then um, read your card, and then say, what, what does that mean to you, or what inspiration does that give you? So my card is, write your positive affirmation. Um, so is that for me, or for yeah, the listener? What, what would be an affirmation you use that people might learn from to help you kind of keep yourself boosted up, and then help you teach others? Yeah, yeah. So an affirmation I use is, I, I am a child of God. You're, you're a child of God. And um, the way I think about music and everything is there's interacting with the people around us. But for me, at the end of the day, this, this is the most important relationship. And um, you, you were created for a reason, and I was. And it's your... You're right, and in some way, it's your responsibility to, to figure that out and take that path. Isn't that great? I'm going to turn wow. this back up oh, to make sure I've got the mics back up where they're supposed to be here. All right. There well, we go. Yeah. That was such a pleasure to do that interview. She's uh, she's amazing, and I, you did a great job, by the way. Thank you. I was looking at that going, wow, oh, Beth, you're, you're I get there, the you know, I'm kind of on the road and learning, and um, yeah, disregard the little bit of a flickering light, but I was yeah. working on that. <laughs> uh, but I think Julie had a gift, right? A special gift? And, uh, she does, and she runs that class, and she said, that's really about finding ways to be creative and create for your business and for your life. And she's offered $75 off that class. That's good. Yeah, so it's on our website, on boostpowerradio.com. You can get the link. And then go to Julie's site. And I know it's a fantastic class. Very intimate. It's a very big process. And you just get to work through right. whatever you're working on. And creating she, a book, creating a new idea, creating a speech, whatever. And if she sends us a, a, an MP3 of some kind of music, we'll do that. We know the show that plays. Okay, yeah. And you can find her on iTunes. You can find her on Julie Geller. Find her everywhere. JulieGeller.com. Um, so many places. And, and then I thought we'd go back a little bit about Christmas and some fun stuff. Yeah. yeah we've, got a, we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, so are you getting ready for, I mean, here's some weird traditions. Okay. Okay. 
So bad Santa in Austria is a bad Santa tradition. So what is that? Well, that's uh, <laughs> that's what it sounds like, a bad Santa. Yeah. Like, it goes to the bad kids. Oh, like so it's different than a lump of coal. Yeah, kind of like bad Santa. It's like Krampus. You remember that? The Krampus. Krampus guy. No. That's like this devil, and he looks like it. He's horrible, and he's like the anti-Santa, and that's in... I don't see what Krampus is. I believe... I think... It's, I can't remember where it's at, but it might be Norway. Oh, no well, you know, I hang out and, in Norway a lot now. Okay, well, let me tell you what happens. I'm going to ask my Norwegian friends. Well, you don't want Krampus, because if you're like a nice person, that's fine. But if you're bad, like he steals the kids, and like eats them or something. It's okay. like horrible. He's like a monster. He's like a devil. Okay, well, I think there's something interesting Francis. because um, I know in Norway, they celebrate a little bit different holiday and it's before Christmas. And I know that because my daughter is with all the Norwegians on right. Plus World Academy and she said that they will be celebrating the Norwegian version of Christmas. I believe it's like the they 24th. Like more shoes out too. I don't know, but they're all inside. But I'll tell you a really weird one. Okay, I don't even know if I can say this because it's so weird. Okay, okay. I'm going to say it. It's called Tagner, have you ever heard of this? C-A-G-N-E-R? No. It's a Catalonian uh, tradition. And Catalonia represented at one time like Spain, Italy, and Portugal, parts of those countries. Right. It's just that culture. And it's basically this guy who's squatting. His pants are half down and he's squatting. And he's pooping. This is a true story. And it's a little, like a figurine. And they hide it in the back of the manger. That's the tradition. Okay. I have no idea why. Is well, it? okay, but all I can say is it ties back into our plumbing <laughs> yeah. yesterday. But I was like, what? Yeah, and, uh, and let's turn how it's supposed to represent good crops or something. But, yeah. it, but I mean, good, was that word yeah, crop? crop? It was crop. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, okay. Crop. Yeah, that was good but crops. I mean, in the major. I was like, major. seriously? You're keep your there. crop out of my major is yeah. what I'm saying. Keep Cagner out of there. So I don't know. I just thought that was kind of weird that yeah. he's in the nativity scene. And then, um, of course, there's cobweb Christmas in the Ukraine. Oh, what's that? Well, there was a, a tradition where a really poor family didn't have any money and they wanted a Christmas tree, so they planted a pine cone through their own tree. And okay. they couldn't afford to decorate it, and they were sad. And they went to bed, and the next morning when they woke up, there was the spider webs that they decorated. Oh, and because there were spider webs jumped in. And they magically turned to gold and silver. And there were oh. spiders and ornaments. So what they do in Ukraine is they decorate with spider webs. Wow. Yeah, and they hang like a spider ornament. Is that kind of like that Halloween stuff, that white stuff? Yeah, probably. I hope they're not using a real spider. That's kind of creepy. Uh, and then Germany, they had a pickle in the tree. Did you know that? They have a little pickle ornament sitting in the tree every year, and the kid that finds it gets a special present. No, but I do know about glue bar. Do you know what that is? Uh -uh. It's a spiced, like, punch. So you walk around the uh, Chris Kringle markets in Europe, and I used to do this when I was young and traveling, and mm -hmm. I was with the military doing all those uh, seminars in mm -hmm. Germany, and we go to these Kris Kringle markets, and what they do is they get y'all liquored up on this blue oh, vine, and then you buy a lot. Right, and then you buy <laughs> everything, that's <laughs> all the like, trinkets, right? So how many wooden little dolls do you need? Oh, but okay. after uh, that blue vine, they're, they're looking very enticing, all the little dolls. <laughs> I bet they are. There's so many things <laughs> you want to buy. Like, okay, I'll buy it. So you go home. Well, what? I think when I was young, I tried to make it in America. We came back and tried to make it like a, it's like a spiced blue yummy. That's good. Yeah, I like really that. Are really you, uh, we're going to have a New Year's show, but are you, do you have any New Year's resolutions? You know, I tell you, I really just feel like New Year's is just like, let's rock it. You know, we have this wonderful platform with Booth Power Radio. Um, if you've signed up for our mailing list, and you can, when you go, have your, get our podcast, and what you do is find your own podcast player, whatever you like, and you go subscribe. And it was really a big day when I went to my podcast to SoundCloud and subscribed to my own radio yeah. show. Okay, so we're going to have to wrap it up. I'm sorry. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I have yeah. one big New Year's resolution. Okay. I'm going to share it with you. I've read so many things about the horrible drinking and smoking this yeah. that I've decided this is a firm New Year's resolution for 2019. Absolutely no more reading. No more reading. Because <laughs> it brings you bad news. <laughs> well, don't forget to look at all the great ways to plug in into the great events exactly. for next year. Come make some vision boards. Come have some fun. Come get connected. We just get connected. Let's Peace rock it Radio. together for and 2019. Thanks, Susan Fruit, for being on the show. Thank Julie you. Geller. And, and the amazing Dudley. Such a great show. Great show. Thank you, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful holiday season. And bye-bye. Bye-bye.